news again like every week right here right now Greetings Romis and welcome to RomRom.net, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to a regular news roundup. Welcome to the channel, thanks for stopping by, my name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. If you have any news for us, send us a mail to news at RomRom.net. We always fall into the trap. At the middle of every week we see there are not many news and don't really plan on working on a news video on the weekend, but lo and behold latest on friday we do have enough content for a small video and so plan for a small window of work and then bam razer deliver an update and if it's not them it's somebody else but there's always some kind of update on saturday and we say goodbye to our loved ones hoping to see them again one day and get cracking on the news. Anyway, we again have a cornucopia of news for you and a new most used sim in our statistics. Which may that be? So yeah, a week after the monster update they did, Razer are at it again with what they consider a small update, which is nevertheless more than Race Room has had in months and months. They again updated the Stock Car Pro schedule and updated some minor things in the UI, adjusted the GT1 Soft and the F Ultimate Gen 2 Medium and Hard Tire Physics, and revised the draft effects so cars following another car have a bigger loss of downforce. Also, they've revised the engine heating, cooling and wear rates for a lot of the cars and increased the rear wing drag for most F Ultimate type of cars as well as some physics fixes here and there to different cars. Apart from fiddling with the noises and noise level on a lot of cars, they've done big changes to the sounds of the Porsche Cup. Interior sound, gear shift clunk, upshift volume, limiter. With regards to the AI, they updated the AI lines in Donington for GP and national layouts and changed the curb bollards so they don't damage the cars so much. Apart from that, they've done some graphic fixes to Porsche Cup cars as well as the F3s, the FV10s and the Copa Montana. All this in one week. The detailed list is as always in our description. We get it, Asetek is a Danish company, Magnussen is a Danish driver, but if I'd be Danish I'd be embarrassed to count the most hated driver in F1 amongst my peers and much less would I invite him to be the ambassador of my company. Even less would I invite him to tell me how my hardware should feel like driving a Formula 1 car. I mean, we're talking about a driver who mistakes a puncture with broken suspension. Each his own, I guess. A bad thing about us releasing the news on Sundays is that we cannot tell you about weekend deals in advance, although we did so in our Discord, which you should maybe take a look at. Yeah, that's the QR for it. Anyway, this almost past weekend, you could race for free on Assetto Corsa Competizione and the Challengers Pack DLC. Still can, depending on when and where you're watching this. But not all is lost, because until the 16th of May, you can buy Assetto Corsa Competizione and almost all of the DLCs at 60% their original cost. The exception is, of course, the Challengers Pack DLC, which will be reduced by only 10%. Hey! They just came out with it, so it's understandable. They dropped the news about an hour before our last news appeared, and on a bank holiday no less. Race Room will soon see Interlagos added to its roster of tracks, and while they were at it, the makers also teased a new car coming to the sim, which many think is going to be the 2022 F1 spec car, which they won't be calling that, of course. If this ends up being true, it will be very interesting to compare it to Automobilista 2's F1 2022. Who would have thunk? Wreckfest surprised us this week with a new track, Tors Dallin Circuit, which was released together with a new tournament called Racing Legends. The team of Bugbear have dedicated the track to the mod maker Tor Ole Lerbeck, I hope I pronounced that right, who seems to have had a hand in the making of the track. Tor, we salute you, mod makers are just 
awesome. Oh yeah, with a new tournament come also new rewards. Y'all love the Assetto Corsa Evoluzione video so much? See the link up there. We figured we'd keep you in the know about it and bring you any news. On Friday, Alex deployed version 0.90A of the mod, which brings fully playable expert events, of course, with new rewards. This, on the other hand, means you'll have to download new mods in addition to the ones you already had. A bug that gave a wrong mileage total, especially if you repeated races, is solved. And if you need to limit the FPS, you can do that in ACE too. If your garage is full of cars, you can now order them alphabetically, which is what I also did in my real life garage. Or was it my bookshelf? Speaking about collections, the logos in the car dealership are now smaller, maybe because there's more car brands there than before. And based on user feedback on the Discord as well as the help from said users, when you go to the car page in the dealer, the logo of the car now appears. And you can create your own logos and put them in the ACE folder. Don't worry, when there's no logo, the name appears in normal letters. Did you miss the intro video of a series or would you like to watch it again for whatever reason? Well, now you can. To update Assetto Corsa Evoluzione, just download it from Alex Patreon, extract it and override the files of your already existing install. Seems sim racers had enough time to find out that yes, the sun's still there, nature's still there, and now let's get on with the most important thing in life. Because the overall number of racers is up to a very good level and so are almost all other usage statistics. For the first time since we started collecting the data, BeamNG is not the most used sim. That honor goes to Tada! Assetto Corsa, which needless to say registers the highest number of average users since we started collecting the data. On the one hand, the rise was massive, on the other hand, the rise for BeamNG was moderate albeit at a very high level. Moderate was also the rise of race room from an all-time low of 393 to a barely not all-time low of 396. Truth to be told, and as much as we love race room, the downward trend is clear to see and it's not helped by the feeling there is nothing going on in the race room world other than publishing new content and even that is rather sparse. Compared to what Reza or Studio 397 are doing with their sims, the lack of development news for Raceroom is very disturbing. Speaking about Automobilista 2, the usage numbers are the highest we've ever recorded for it and we are sure them publishing the F1 don't call them F1 cars of 2022 not only ahead of everyone else but in such a very good quality was a boon. If Reza keep this up, they're gonna soon surpass Race Room easily and maybe also R Factor 2, which numbers keep steady but rather low. There's not much else big going on in the stats other than maybe the steady decline in usage of Dirt Rally 2, which for such a classic sim with no support is no surprise. We're rather surprised it holds on to such numbers, but it's a very good sim and we sim racers prefer a sim that has aged well than flashy bullshit, or do we? If you like this video and would like to see more, consider becoming a patron, thus letting us spread our wings. Amongst other perks, it will fix your name for posterity like this. A big thank you to our patrons. If you come here regularly, please consider subscribing. As the cliche goes, what do you want first, the good or the bad news? The good news is that Laguna Seca is coming to our Factor 2 officially in the next drop. We suppose this is in preparation or maybe instead of IndyCar 2023. But in any case, we at last will have an official version in our Factor 2 long after it was in Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competizione. The possibly bad news is that Studio 397's managing director Marcel Offermans is leaving the company after six years. We say 
possibly bad news because this could be business as usual, higher management often leaves a company after the company change owners, or it could be that he's seeing the writing on the wall about motorsport games. On the other hand, developments like needing four and a half years to redo the UI of R-Factor 2 don't show efficiency in moving the sim forward, but PBR and the steps forward in the physics we talked about not too long ago do. On the other other hand, he kept R-Factor 2 alive with new content, series like Formula E and overall moving the seam ahead, albeit within a glacial pace. How much of the one or the other Marcel had his hands into is something we could only vaguely speculate and we leave those speculations to the drama queens out there eager for clicks. In any case, things are moving in the world of R Factor 2 and at the moment we don't have any facts that make them good or bad, even if we feel it tends to the latter. You can find more news and facts, good and bad, in the playlist to the left or the video to the right. Until next time, save fuel, collect pickup and we'll see each other on the podium.